So today I'd like to uh, speak to you about the spiritual world. In the creed we say, creator of all things visible and invisible. And there's a whole spiritual world which we cannot see with the naked eye. But it is more real. It is more real than the physical world, the spiritual world. In the Acts of the Apostles, we have Philip. And uh, it says, For unclean spirits cried out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people. Unclean spirits, possessed people. This is the spiritual world I'm talking about. Then, at the end of the reading, uh, after the unclean spirits were driven out, uh, they laid hands on them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For it had not yet fallen upon any of them. The Holy Spirit, the love of God, we would say the third person of the blessed Trinity, the Holy Spirit who lives within within us. Back in October, a, a group of us went to Poland for a Divine Mercy pilgrimage. And of course we visited uh, the birthplace of St. John Paul II. And one of the most difficult days, just 30 miles from his birthplace, is the concentration camp Auschwitz. Ask any one of us who went what we witnessed there, what took place there not that long ago, back in the 1930s and 40s, was satanic. It was evil. It, it was possession. And I'm convinced that Adolf Hitler and the whole Holocaust was satanic. And what happened in those concentration camps and during the Holocaust went beyond fallen human nature. It went beyond us. It was satanic. And uh, uh, Pope Francis, in, in often in his homilies, if you listen to his homilies or read his homilies, he talks about the devil. He talks about evil. He talks about Satan. Uh, quite a bit. How many of you were aware that earlier this month, the beginning of May, a black mass uh, was planned for Harvard University? How many people show me your hands? How many knew that? Okay, maybe maybe half the congregation was aware. Yeah, a satanic mass planned to take place on the campus of Harvard. And uh, the group planning the Mass, it's called the Black Mass, they were known as the Satanic Temple. And we didn't know whether or not they were going to use a real consecrated host from a Catholic Mass. We didn't know. They, they w wavered on that. Uh, and uh, it was going to happen because of academic freedom. The Archdiocese of Boston rallied because they denounced a black mass, and they countered by announcing that they were going to have a Eucharistic pilgrimage carrying the Holy Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament, from the chapel at MIT, and they would march all the way over to Harvard Square to St. Paul's Church. And then at St. Paul, they planned a holy hour of reparation for the desecration of the Holy Eucharist. A black mass is blasphemy. A black mass takes the host and it takes what we do here uh, and mocks it in the most ugly way. Now, uh, something happened. 
when the archdiocese announced the Eucharistic procession, nearly 60,000 Harvard students, faculty, and alumni signed a petition, and they didn't have much time to do it. Nearly 60,000 students, faculty, and alumni of Harvard signed a petition protesting having a black mass on their campus. And on Monday, May the 12th, the president of Harvard University, Drew Gilton Faust, she wrote this, the reenactment of a black mass planned by a student group affiliated with the Harvard Extension School challenges us. The black mass had its historical origins as a means of denigrating the Catholic Church. It mocks a deeply sacred event in Catholicism and is highly offensive to many in the church and beyond. The decision by a student club to sponsor an enactment of this ritual is abhorrent. This is the president of heart. It represents a fundamental affront to the values of inclusion, belonging, mutual respect, and must, that must define our community. And she adds this, and I commend her for it. I plan to attend the Holy Hour and benediction at St. Paul's Church on our campus this Monday evening in order to join others in reaffirming our respect for the Catholic faith at heart. So she, she went. Now she went. Uh, and here's, here's the extraordinary thing. There were 1,500 people, 1,500 people who marched from MIT to St. Paul and jammed this little church for the Holy Hour, for the Hour of Eucharistic Adoration uh, and Benediction. And uh, that night, as they were praying, as they were interceding, an announcement was made that the Black Mass had been moved off campus and finally canceled. Now, can I have a show of how many people here knew about the Eucharistic procession and the Holy Hour? Okay, a few. Isn't that interesting, though, that the satanic part almost everybody had heard about and I'm going to say maybe a quarter of us heard about the Eucharistic Holy Hour uh, and the procession to St. Paul. A cry of relief went up from the Catholic community, and the next morning, media sites posted photos of a long adoration procession through Boston and a crowded little church filled with people on their knees with their hands clasped. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But what I'm trying to say is that the spiritual world is real. The Holy Spirit is real. But Satan is also real. Do not be naive. Go to elsewhere. That's all it takes to see uh, demonic activity, satanic activity. And so Satan hates the body and blood of Christ. He hates the body of blood in Christ. And, 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 and Satan hates Pope Francis, I think, because he talks against him all the time. And he hates us because we are the visible body of Christ. That's what St. Paul said. We are the body of Christ, the visible body of Christ here on earth. Do not be naive. And so I am going to ask... Uh, you know, the Eucharistic ministers and myself, we distribute communion, receive the Eucharist immediately, immediately. Don't be walking back to your place like that. And if you see somebody who hasn't consumed, we can't see. The Eucharistic ministers can't tell. I can't tell. Be vigilant. This is real. These things uh, do, do happen. Uh, and, and just to let you know, I mean, there, there is, a, in every diocese, there is a priest who is an exorcist. And, and we can only do an exorcism. The bishop has to uh, 
give the okay to do an exorcism. And it's usually, they have a holy priest. I, I haven't been called yet. <laughs> but there is there is an exorcist in, in, in each in each side. So I'm not trying to frighten you, but I'm just just be aware, be aware of a spiritual warfare, be aware of good and evil, uh, and, and, and that good is good is going to triumph. There's no question. Uh, there's a professor at Boston College, Peter Kraft, and I read a lot of his books. Uh, but Peter Kraft says, you know, the Christ has already won the victory. Christ is already trying. It, it's uh, it's inevitable, and he, he describes what's going on now uh, with with the black masses and and, and, and things that are blasphemous. Uh, he, he calls it a mopping up operation. They're like snipers or roadside bombs, that type of thing. But Christ is assured victory. The battle is already won. So we're just dealing with with, with snipers. But but be aware. Of He'd be fully aware of it. And what we want to do is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the good spirit, not the evil spirit, the good spirit. And I want to suggest this to you. Your body, your physical body, houses the Holy Spirit. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we should have great self-respect and respect for each other. Each person is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, interestingly, the same word in Hebrew and Greek for, for spirit is the same word for breath. So in, in Hebrew, it's ruach. Ruach. It means breath. It also means spirit. In Greek, it's pneuma. Pneuma. It means breath. It means spirit. And what I'm suggesting that you do at least once a day, maybe when you're going to bed at night, just put away everything else and just become aware of your breathing. Breathe in and out. Just become aware of your breathing. The breath of life. Huh? The breath of life. And then become aware of the Holy Spirit within you. You're not reading anything. You're not saying anything. Just become aware of the presence of God, the Holy Spirit within you. And, and if we're filled with the Spirit, we've got nothing to worry about. Nothing. 